problem. I found this poster in town today. Circus Maestro, the UK's lousiest circus. Ooh. Gasp at our inflated ticket prices. Groan at our useless jugglers. Uh Yawn at our tedious clowns. Oh. <laughs> you know what this means? We need a new publicity officer. You know, it means that somebody is defacing our posters. Somebody who hates this circus and wants to destroy us. But who could possibly hate us this much? Well, it could be anyone who's seen the show. <laughs> no, I think it's Jimmy Steed. His rodeo circus is two miles down the road and this town ain't big enough for the both of us. But uh, competition is healthy. The better show will prevail. You're right. I'll start packing. We're going to fight this, cos what they say about us is lies. Are our ticket prices inflated? No. no. Are our jugglers useless? No. no. Are our clowns tedious? Well, that's charming, that is. <laughs> well, if we're so terrible, how can we get a huge cheer when we finish? I think you've answered your own question, then. <laughs> I'll have you know that one critic said that we were the perfect act. He said you were the perfect act for nipping out to the toilet. <laughs> that was our nicest review, wasn't it, Geoffrey? I mean, people do need to go to the toilet, so we provide a valuable service. <laughs> you have had a clever technique for dealing with rival circus owners. Good, Georgie, what was it? We had them beaten up. Oh, he was such a character, wasn't he? I'm not having anyone beaten. Auntie Helen, any ideas? Perhaps we could phone in a bomb threat. That way nobody gets hurt. But uh, what if they do not fall for it? Ah, that's where David comes in. We strap five pounds of plastic explosive to his belly and send him into their tents. <laughs> Look at the determination on his face. <laughs> Thank you, Georgie. Moving swiftly on. Health and safety inspection. Uh. We need to pass it this time. Easy way to pass the inspection. When the bloke comes in, yeah. sleep with him. Not please, Lizzie, not. Not just like that, obviously. Make it clear it's payment for passing the inspection. What you might call... Tip for tap. Exactly. <laughs> Lizzie, you are worth so much more than this. All right. For passing the inspection plus 50 quid. Oh, I'm not going to sleep with the health inspector. Oh, come on. We've all done it one time or another, haven't we? I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Helen? I don't know. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's a radical option. We could pass the health and safety inspection by being healthy and safe. Yes, yes, this is a much better plan, Lizzie. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll even wear a hard hat, like, um, oh, that homosexual pop group. Um... Coldplay. Yes. <laughs> but, Lizzie, we are artistes. You can't expect us to tone it down. No, you and Auntie Helen are fine. There's no law against boring people to death. <laughs> but you can't honestly say that our act is safe. What about that bit where I hit Helen round the head with a plank? Balsa wood, isn't it? Doesn't have to be. <laughs> right, so health and safety inspection, rival circus, what else? Well, they do say bad news comes in threes. Right, I'm off to work on a new routine. Three. <laughs> I've heard that Jimmy Steed employs illegal child labour to run his circus. And he's incredibly cruel to donkeys. Goodbye. Lizzie! We got an emergency. Dave has been kidnapped. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. He went to the hairdressers this afternoon and never came back. <laughs> he went out on his own. He's not a child, Lizzie. <laughs> Jimmy Steed must have taken him. Oh, what a relief. What? Well, if all he's planning to do is kidnap a dog, oh. then... Well, it's obviously terrible and we'll have to hit back really hard. I've got some ideas. We can poison Jimmy Steed's popcorn. Hello. Are you from Health and Safety? But what sort of poison should we use? Arsenic? Cyanide? Uh... Georgie, this is the Health and Safety Officer. Huh? Hello. Oh, right. You know about poison. We need something that's quick-acting and untraceable. <laughs> yes, shut up now, please, Georgie. And then we can catch up their caravans with a chainsaw. Goodbye. <laughs> She's only joking. We're not really going to poison anyone's popcorn. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Uh, any chance of a look around? Yes, absolutely. But first, let me put the lid back on this very sharp pen. <laughs> you can never be too careful. <laughs> right, a look around. Starting... <laughs> Starting in here. Safety is paramount in our circus. I myself hold a first aid award.
Fire extinguishers all working. <laughs> Thank you, Erasmus. Oh, look, here's another random member of our troop. What are you doing, Boyko? Funny you should ask, Lizzie. You have caught me checking. Is this him? Yes. You have caught me checking to be sure none of the programs can give a nasty paper cut. Oh, boy. <laughs> Such a stickler for safety. Well done. Yes, it is important to me that everybody gets hurt and nobody has a good time. <laughs> <laughs> he means that the other way round. Of course, there's no need for you two to make love to each other, OK? Oh, sorry to hear that. Yes. Um, oh, look, here's Uncle Jeff. This is Mr Killjoy himself, is it? Meet Plonky, our very harmless clown. Ah, oh, now, I hope you haven't got one of those electric shock buzzers in your hand. Oh, typical health and safety. Where do they find these guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've always wanted to do that to a clown. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you've come to censor the show, have you? No, no, just checking you're all safe. Then you wouldn't possibly want to know about my new routine. Good. It's literally suicide. I'll take that back. Keep talking. <laughs> One word, ferrets. I stuff a hot dog down my trousers, send three hungry ferrets in after it. The kids love it. Certainly sounds dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, which is why Mr Jobsworth here is going to ban me from performing it. No, I'm not. <laughs> what? I'm not going to ban you from performing it. What are you talking about? Have you seen the teeth on most things? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. They look absolutely lethal. Best of luck. <laughs> so, that's settled then, Uncle Jeff. We'll see you in the ferrets at tonight's show. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, Jeff, superstar, woo! <laughs> Just, hang on, wait a minute! <laughs> oh, I am so sorry about the rusty nail in that seat. We'll get it fixed. And the woodworm in the tent poles. Lizzie, it's fine. You've passed. Really? Oh, I was so sure you were going to fail us on the raw sewage around the hot dog van. I didn't notice any raw sewage. Didn't you? Great, we've passed. Thank you. Lizzie, uh, there is one other thing. Yes? Would you come out for dinner with me? Oh, that's a lovely offer, but I, I'm too busy, sorry. OK, no problem. Um, if you do change your mind, I'm going to stick around for the show. To complete your report? Uh, no, to see that clown get castrated. <laughs> Did we win him over? I think we did. He asked me out. Oh, how exciting. Where are you going? Mm. Oh, nowhere. I can't have a relationship. We're always on the road. We travel round six sites in North Staffordshire. It's not round the world with Michael Palin. <laughs> I know, but he, he's not my type. Oh, Lizzie, what is your type? Whenever I set you up with nice men, you always say they're freaks. They are always freaks. <laughs> Rover, the dog-faced boy. <laughs> Glandula, the world's fattest man. What about that nice fellow with the beard? He was a bearded lady. <laughs> this is why I don't let you match make. Well, that inspector didn't look like a freak. No. Though, of course, you can never be totally sure until you see them with no clothes on. <laughs> Maybe I was a bit dismissive. Even then, you have to look really, really closely. <laughs> I remember my first night with Jeff. Do you know, I think you're right. I'm going to call him. Lizzie! Things have escalated. Jimmy Steed said this. We have your dog. Hand over £200 or you'll never see his little wet nose again. Outrageous, isn't it? I know! 200 quid! You can get five new dogs for that. <laughs> You'll pay it, of course. Georgie, I can't. That'll be letting them win. Surely there's another dog you can use for now. Another dog? David and I are a team. David and I have a unique rapport. You can't just replace that. For a 20 quid bonus? I get five dogs. <laughs> What a handsome animal. Such nobility. <laughs> when did Fido pass away? 1998. You can just see the mark with the courtship, Tim. I don't think the audience might notice. I'm going to glue a bit of corduroy over it, so hopefully no. <laughs> and, of course, nobody will be able to tell once he's on the motorbike. <laughs> How the ferrets, Jeff? Nice and bloodthirsty? Yeah, I uh, couldn't get ferrets at such short notice, so I got the next best thing. Guinea pigs. Yeah. They're actually quite vicious. 
like hairy piranhas, teeth like razors. It's a little known fact. Thing is, Jeff, knowing how much you really want to do this act, I've got my hands on some actual ferrets. Oh, that is so lucky, isn't it, Jeffrey? Yes. <laughs> Mate of mine, a Liverpool dog fan. And a fruit carrier from Ecuador. Haven't had fresh meat in months. Here you go. <laughs> It is. Say yeah. thank you to Erasmus. Thank you, Erasmus. All right, and this is going to be the best show ever. <laughs> right, I've got a good feeling about tonight. And we all know why that is, don't we? No, Auntie Helen, shush. It's because Lizzie's got a date. The health and safety guy, you saucy little minx. Agreed to sleep with him for passing the inspection. No, we passed the inspection before I agreed to... <laughs> I didn't actually agree to do anything. He's just coming round to my caravan for dinner. I'll get you some nice music. Please, Lizzie, you do not have to do this. Yes, she does. Of course, you'll have to film the dirty deed in case we need to blackmail him afterwards. If I was got a steady leather collar, I could land you. Thank you, and the meeting ends here. Lizzie, listen to me. You are seeing this man for all the wrong reasons. No, actually, I'm seeing him because I quite like him. But this is the worst reason of all. Tonight. I will throw myself from the trapeze. Really? You might need this, then. <laughs> oh, it's quite a show. I've never seen anything like it. You really enjoyed it, honestly. Well, where else can you see a tightrope walker, a stuffed owl station on a motorbike, and a man having his private savaged by ferrets and still have change from a £20 note? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put some music on. <laughs> Thank you, Erasmus. God, it must be fascinating living in a circus. I mean, usually when I go out to dinner, everyone ends up talking about house prices and mortgages. Ugh, I know nothing about mortgages. <laughs> How refreshing. Or you could go for an interest-only mortgage where you basically service the interest <laughs> on the original loan, promising to repay the total amount at the end of the term. At the end of the term. It's fascinating. Tell me again about trackers. Lizzie, I'm boring my own buttocks off here. Surely not interested. I am, actually. It's the first time all week I've been able to close the door on the circus. Ahoy there! I'm not interrupting, am I? Yes. I enjoyed your act tonight, Ponky. Yeah, yeah the ferret seemed quite enthusiastic, too. It looked like they had a ball. <laughs> You're supposed to be a health expert. Tell me. Does that look septic to you? Uncle Jeff, please! Honestly, tell me, how long do you think I've got? About five seconds. We're trying to have dinner here, now take it to casualty. No, no, I'm not taking it to casualty. They take the mickey out of me in casualty. Get out! <laughs> oh, Lizzie, I'm so sorry about Jeffrey's behaviour back there. Oh, no, it's fine. Well, I've no. told him not to do that at the table, but he never learns. OK, it's fine. And on the subject of apologies, Boyko. <laughs> I'm sorry for throwing this sword at your head. Uh, it's all right. No harm done. And? Lizzie is a very special lady. You are a lucky man, and I wish you a lifetime of happiness together. <laughs> Thanks. It's just dinner. Well done, Boyko. Be strong. If you had so, I'll roast him on a spit and feed him to his grandmother. <laughs> Sweet. All these visitors. It's, it's like the nativity story. Oh, this one's even bought a gift. Oh, Georgie, can't this wait? No, the kidnappers have sent this. It's David's. Oh, my God, what is it? Look for yourself. <gasps> oh! Disgusting, Georgie, get it out! It's definitely David's. <laughs> Look, you can see his favourite biscuit in it. <laughs> Should we lock the door, do you think? They won't stop them. They'll use the windows. <laughs> there. <clears throat> now let's try to relax and enjoy the evening. Leave it, it'll keep. I won't, I'll deal with it. Howdy. Who are you? My name's Jimmy Steed. Little message for you, partner. You limey's want to learn to quit messing with my circus. 
We ain't got smallpox, and I ain't been abusing no donkey. <laughs> Sorry, I, I really didn't follow a word of that. <laughs> so, did you and Andy have a nice evening? That depends on whether he enjoyed being punched in the face by Jimmy Steed and having a dog poo waved under his nose. And did he? <laughs> I'm guessing no. It's a shame. Did you like him? I did, yeah. Oh. He was telling me all about mortgages. <laughs> Apparently, you can have a fixed rate or variable, which can be cheaper but might increase if the interest rates go up. Oh, it's another world, isn't it? It really is. Hello? You want in? Oh, my God, is that as painful as it looks? Well, I didn't get much sleep last night. Every time I closed my eyes, there was a clown pulling down his trousers. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not what you expect to see on a first date? No. Though I saw it on our first date. <laughs> Auntie Helen? I can't promise that next time will be as memorable. Next time? You want to see me again? Friday? Not here. You come to my place and I'll cook. Oh, I can't. We do a show every night. But I'm asking you to miss one show. Mm. When was the last time you had a night off? 2003. Oh, then. <laughs> one full night off. Take your mind completely away from the circus. Look, I'm not sure. They've sent another message. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely David. I taught him that bark as a distress cord. <laughs> what time can you pick me up? Goodbye, Lizzie. You will always have a very special place in my heart. <laughs> I'm only going away for one evening. <laughs> I ask only that you think of me from time to time and that you take this. Oh, it's very nice. If you ever need me, you press this button and I will come for you. Thank you very much. It's all right for some. When do I ever get a night off? Jeff, please take a night off. <laughs> right. I'll be away for less than 24 hours. Are you sure you can manage? Yes. yes. I've written down some emergency numbers, and if any strangers come, you just tell them I've popped out for five minutes. Lizzie will be fine. Auntie Helen's in charge, and I don't want any of you playing up for her. All right? They'll be good as gold. You go and have a lovely time. She's gone. Yes! Hey, everybody! Look who I found! <laughs> David! Oh, I'm so pleased. Where'd you find him, Bolko? In a box, underneath George's caravan. You know what this means? It was a scam to get the ransom money. <gasps> you mean David faked his own kidnapping? <laughs> Yes, naughty David. But if Steed didn't kidnap David, Steed's revenge is yet to come. <laughs> My God, the size of this place! It's fine. I know it's small, but it's home. It's a mansion! <gasps> Look at this! Your kitchen and your toilet are separate. <laughs> There's an actual wall in between them. You have been in a house before. Oh, my God. You've got stairs. Yeah, there's a loft as well, but I don't want to give you a heart attack. <sighs> you must think I'm a bit bonkers. Well, yes. I'm just nervous, you know, because it's showtime. A man could misinterpret those words, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the circus. It's the first time I've ever missed a show. What was that noise? That was a fire engine. That was definitely a fire engine. Lizzie, Lizzie, the circus is 20 miles away. Well, they're never going to get there in time. <laughs> Don't you think it's possible that maybe they can survive without you for one night? No. Lizzie, come on. They're mature adults. They're probably getting on really well. You've ruined my act, you idiot. No, Jeff, you ruined your act by being in it. <laughs> when we come on, you're supposed to play the music from Looney Tunes, not Hitler's speech to the 1935 Nuremberg rally. <laughs> you idiot. I've a good mind to phone Lizzie on you. I wasn't concentrating. Well, concentrate on my fist, sunshine. <laughs> stop fighting, you two. Why can't you be more like Boyko? He's not shouting, is he? He sat there happy as Larry. Lizzie is lost to me forever. <laughs> Tonight, I will throw myself from the high wire and break into a million pieces like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> if you ask me, we're all worked up about that Jimmy Steed fellow. Hey, 
Isn't it weird that Jimmy Steed hasn't tried any sabotage? Hang on. Maybe doing nothing is Jimmy Steed's sabotage. Making us nervous, making us turn against each other. Jeff, someone's let your ferrets out. Or maybe he's just let your ferrets out. He's done what? <laughs> Where are they? Don't panic, Jeffrey. They'll probably just run away. No, they've got the taste of blood now. They'll attack. But what if they bite one of the children? No, stuff the kids. It's my blood they've got the taste for. It'll be fine. All those jabs you had at the hospital. No, we need to phone Lizzie, get Lizzie back. No, no, no. We can handle this. We've got to catch those ferrets without the audience knowing. Noticing. How do we do that? We need someone who knows them, someone who's had the jabs, someone who's worked with them before. There's only one person for that job. David Attenborough. <laughs> no. What? I know I keep going on, but you're right. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. Exactly. What could they have done? Electrocuted the audience? Lizzie? That happened one time, but it was only once. <laughs> Why don't you ring them? Might stop you worrying. No, I won't let them ruin the evening. Tonight's about you and me. I shouldn't worry about some terrible disaster at work, or the acts fighting each other, or the audience being injured, or some terrible catastrophe happening to the circus, meaning we're finished forever. What's the number? 077. <laughs> Another ferret over here, Jeff. Don't shake your legs, they'll lose their grip. <laughs> 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 Erasmus, it's me. Is everything all right? Fine. Oh. It's going well. I thought you were taking the night off. I am. What's that noise? It's uh, applause. Good audience tonight. I'm yet enough by now, you little devils. See? They won't let us finish. Got it, Dad. Bye. Bye. So, what's the big crisis? There isn't one, apparently. Seems they can do without me. You sound surprised. I am a bit. After all, they are complete idiots. They truly are. <laughs> But you've taught them to fend for themselves. Keep talking. Well, you're like a mother duck who's taught her ducklings how to swim, and now they're safe in the pond on their own. That is the nicest duck comparison <laughs> I have ever had. And if they can cope without you, that means you can cope without them. was a disaster. Disaster. I'm bitten to pieces, but at least I'm still alive. That's what I mean, disaster. I should tear your little head off. Calm down, Jeff. You've lost a lot of blood. Excuse me. <laughs> Who's the man in charge? He, he is. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. First circus I've seen in 50 years, and I loved it. The grandkids loved it, too. Thank you all very much. Well, there's no need for sarcasm. <laughs> I think he meant it, Jeff. I think we managed. We beat Jimmy Steed and we got through the show on our own. Yes. Yes, we did. Do you by any chance fancy going for a drink? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I had a great night, Andy. Thank you. Well, it's good to see you relax. Relax and think, actually. Maybe there's more to life than Circus Maestro. Morning, lovebirds. Back to reality. Good night, was it? It was, actually. Good show. Fine, fine. No big problems, were there, Jeff? No. Nothing major, no. Nothing to report at all? Mm, not really. All fairly uneventful. Right. So where's the tent? <laughs> oh, what, sorry? The tent. The big canvassy thing where we keep the circus. I told you she'd notice. Oh, yeah, there was that one thing that did happen. We went to the pub. What, all of you? No. Helen and Bonko stayed behind to look after things. And? Jimmy Steed told him he was from the council's big top inspection department and they, uh, helped him dismantle it. <laughs> Fourteen hours I was away. During which time you killed my circus by going... Straight for the juggler. Shut it. Lizzie, calm down. Maybe we can look at this as an opportunity. An opportunity for what? My circus has been nicked. An opportunity to walk away and start living your own life. You said yourself these people are idiots. <laughs> You've wasted I don't know how many years of your life on them. And if you don't make a break soon, you'll be trapped here forever and, and you could be so much more. Get a real job, 
Find a nice bloke. Stop wasting your time. Get out. Sorry? No one calls my team idiots. Well, you call them idiots. Except me. Now, I have learnt a very valuable lesson today, which is these guys need me, don't you? Not really. <laughs> I need you, Lizzie. Like an apple needs a maggot. <laughs> we are nothing without you. Not much with her. Right, get out of my circus. What circus? Oh, field, then. Get out of my empty field. Lizzie, think about what you're doing with your life. Hey! You heard what the nice lady said? Sunshine outside! <laughs> Lizzie, you're wasting your life on idiots. Lizzie! Right, the rest of you, let's get down to Jimmy Steed's circus and take our goddamn tent back. Come on, Georgie, shift. Lizzie? Yes, Uncle Jeff. Please don't leave us again. Of course not. Mr. Mead becomes the butt of an internet joke in Waterloo Road, next year on BBC One. There's home improvement with a DIY twist in Mad About the House on BBC Three.